Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me and for giving me this great opportunity to flash my aerial photos of Stockholm. Um, go back a few years, but I'm sure you won't notice anyway. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit this afternoon about uh, a particular way of thinking about cities and urban spaces, uh, and uh, probably going to speak some languages that is slightly unfamiliar, um, which is going to be derived from some of my research uh, during the last couple of, well, five to, to eight years trying to figure out how to think about uh, cities uh, in general, but in particular with relation to how we should understand mobility. I'll return to the notion of mobility in a, in a second. Now, this is roughly what I'm going to go through. Um, I'm going to say a few words for introduction, and then I'm going to speak a little bit about what in the social sciences are quite familiar terminologies nowadays, the mobility's turn, ways of thinking about mobility, and the physical, material, but also the cultural and social aspects of uh, the various ways we are engaging with the, the world in, in a mobile sense. Then I'm going to zoom in a little bit to something that is slightly more introvert in a sense, which is my particular way of framing these sorts of things, and some of the concepts and, and notions that are uh, coming out of, of, of works that I've been doing lately. Um, and then finally, hopefully, I'll be able to say a little bit about Stockholm on the move or whatever. So I'm not going to talk process, I'm not going to talk plans, I'm going to speak a bit of theory. I'm going to speak, uh, you know, about stuff on the ground, um, which is, I mean, I've done quite a few things related to regional plans and the European Union and those sorts of things. But over the last decade or so, I've actually been working more on the everyday life and mobilities in the city and how those sorts of things are connected. And of course, I want to claim that these items and themes are, are hugely relevant for, for, for even regional uh, planning discussions as well. Okay, so. Let me just, um, by way of introdu introduction, say a few words about myself and then a little bit about this strange language that I'm going to use. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of a hybrid, um, or I'm a sociologist that hangs out with architects and geographers, which I guess is the most precise definition of myself these days. Um, I've been studying in the social sciences, uh, political science sociology, and I have a PhD in planning. I consider myself a renegade sociologist with an interest in space. Um, I'm a professor of urban theory, and I'm a founder and a board member of a Center for Mobilities and Urban Studies at Albrecht University. And I think that institution is quite emblematic to the way we like to think about these sorts of things because it covers the humanities, the social sciences, and the technical faculties in an attempt to figure out how to think about cities in general and, and mobilities in particular. Also, I re very recently uh, founded a, a research cluster that we call MUT, Mobility and Tracking Technologies, we work a lot with uh, GPS uh, apps and, and GPS transmitters and various sorts of RFIDs, Bluetooth, those sorts of technologies, and trying to figure out how they fit into planners' toolboxes nowadays, which I think they, they do and they deserve attention for that sort of thing. Um, yeah, cross-mobilities networks and other things. And actually, also one thing I just want to mention is that I've been a long-term coordinator of the uh, urban design studio working on the redesign of the metro uh, in, in Copenhagen with urban designers. So. This is really much where my interest is, is actually being, being fed to these sorts of things. So that's a little bit of uh, the weird person standing in front of you. Now, in introductory terms, I want to talk a little bit about the notion of staging mobilities, um, which will illustrate how mobility in the network city may be understood from the point of view of the situation or situation of mobilities. By looking at how infrastructures and the built environment create the frames for mobile everyday life situations, the talk aims to bridge the local and the regional scales in a perhaps rather unconventional way. So regardless if we're looking at, at regional motorways, urban metro systems, bike path system in the city, the key is to understand that we're dealing with mobile situations nested within the larger socio-technical mobility assemblages, transgressing fixed scales from the local to the global, the regional, and so forth. As for instance, the question of, is this house a local space? Well, I don't know how about, about you guys, but I'm, I'm, I'm tapped into the Wi-Fi for sure, right? So it doesn't really make sense to think of, of scales as Chinese dolls nested nicely into one another. And I think that kind of thinking comes a little bit out of the mobilities perspective as well. So the staging mobilities perspective proposes to set the mobile situation in the foreground and explore how mobility is reconnecting scales, technologies, and people. But this happens in a and this is, this is a really simplistic notion, but it works uh, as a shorthand for, for opening up the analysis, I would argue. This happens in the process of staging from above by regulations, planning, systems, and design, and equally as a 
staking from below by mobile subjects in everyday situations. So this talk will build a new perspective on the regional and urban infrastructure by showing that what takes place within these much more, much, is much more than instrumental uh, movements from A to B, and that this is understood best from the point of view of the mobile situation. So let me turn a little bit uh, towards the uh, theoretical framing of the mobility's turn and, and, um, and, and a particular way of talking about cities and, and, and mobilities that has been around in the social sciences for the last decade or so. Um, basically, um, the mobility's turn um, claims that mo mobility is more than A to B. So we're kind of interested in the non-instrumental features next to transport, right? So transport is important. It's important to move people and goods and stuff and bits and information and those sorts of things from one place to another. But as that progresses, we argue that you actually also are constructing identities, relation of self and other, your relationship to places, and those sorts of things, uh, which hardly fits the, man, the uh, sort of the, um, the vocabulary of the ordinary transport uh, planners uh, sort of way of speaking about things. So mobility is a, an attempt to move beyond transport, um, and it questions this instrumental only understanding of movement, i.e. movement equals costs, right? I'm sure all of you are familiar with the loads of statistics where you can see how much time we waste by commuting. I mean, equaling commuting with waste is kind of like a, a, a blind alley if you want to understand what commuting does to a society and to interactions. This is not something out of the blue, of course, and a lot of, of you are familiar with old, old studies done by that thing about Rainer Banham's studies of the LA freeway made in the early 70s and some of uh, other, other types. But I think it's a, it's a fairly still unconventional way of talking and planning uh, communities and talking to planners where things are pretty much compartmentalized into traffic and experience and culture and the mayor's office with the businesses and all of that. So actually that doesn't really make a lot of sense. So the mobility terms try to open the black, black box of transportation. So it's a kind of a cross-disciplinary case and this is just like a quick shot of some of these uh, influential uh, text that you might want to, and you can, for those of you familiar with and know your history, you can go back and see Kemal Lynch's uh, influential book there, uh, where he actually talks a lot about um, a city's transportation system being a primate equational piece of equipment, uh, equipment. So it's actually places where you are formatted as a citizen, and where you get, you know, your relationship to other people as well. Um, many people have sort of thrown in bits and pieces. A room of view is predominantly made by architects. Uh, in Search of New Public Domain is a collaborative effort by Martin Heyer, uh, who's a political scientist, and Anna Reindorp, who's an architect. Um, but otherwise, it is fair to say, I think, that the, the book by Cresswell, uh, On the Move, and the book by John O'Reilly and Mobilities are more firmly rooted within um, uh, the social sciences and uh, in sociology and geography in particular. Okay, so assumption is that cities are relational and they're networked. So the contemporary city is seen as a node in the network spanning from the local to the globe. Therefore, it's important to leave the concept of the bounded and monocentric city and instead conceptualize how urban, the urban is set uh, is a set of functional, technical, cultural, and aesthetic transformations happening with a network of transit. By understanding the relational dimension of the contemporary city, the importance of designing for flows of goods, vehicles, and peoples, and signs and ideas is for surely highlighted. This also means that everyday life is taking on a particular flavor in the network city. Everyday life is nested into these systems of circulation and synchronization. Within such complex socio-technical systems, humans and artifacts embody in interaction and software mingle in complex and often routine-oriented ways. The mobile everyday life is staged from above by design and systems and from below by humans in motion. Now, some of you have listened to talks today about ways of thinking about monocentrics and polycentrics, and these are some of the ideas that are bouncing around in the in the landscape, I'm sorry for the, it doesn't seem very clear, but some of you might recognize Cedric Prize as being quite visionary and seeing that the contemporary city is like uh, the Scramble Lake uh, situation. So we're kind of moving from a monocentric to a multiplex complexity of cities. And what does that mean in terms of our way of thinking about it? That's, that's part of, of the discussion, of course. I think a particular important concept, the notion is the sense of place um, and cities, sites, cities, and regions are always only something due to their relational couplings to other places, right? So it's a relational way of understanding this building, this region, this quarter, this neighborhood, and so forth. And mobility is actually the key to the nature of that relation. And of course, you can ask yourself a problematic issue. Is the place switched off? 
Could there be better connections? What's the quality of the connections? What's the nature? What's the segregational effects? And those sorts of questions. But you could also ask the more potent, uh, looking for potentials, arguing could new couplings be made, and how could we think of these sorts of things? So, in the network city, cities and regions and places are related within networks, and the crossing nodes are what I elsewhere recall, refer to as critical points of contact. So, you could be looking at a city from the point of view of your assignment this, in this course and saying, okay, how is this network optimal in connection? How can we actually uh, afford new connections? How can we think about new networks, new services, new ways of, of, uh, of facilitating connection in a, in a network like that? Um, and, and actually, of course, also whether we can create uh, new types of, of, um, of designs for those sorts of things. I want to say just a little bit extra on this with the media and the technology because that's something I'm increasingly being, being occupied with. I think you can argue that a network city has acquired a new skin, a digital layer of communication. So you find mobile technologies to mobile people, but also that physical design, uh, f physical and digital infrastructures merge into hybrid, hybrid mediated landscapes where it doesn't make sense to start looking at the virtual and the real as separate entities. People are connected in networks, but they also carry networks as they go along. As well as mobile media means new social dynamics, they also mean new types of power, right? New types of, of and actually, bottom line, I think, I think the mobility perspective is very much interested in the fact that um, the way you organize a city and a region is very much a question of power and vested interest and, and you know, contestedness and those sorts of things. So any, any region and city will, will be facing what we call competing mobility rationales, you know, ways of performing in a particular uh, sense of, of advocating for certain mobilities and others. So I guess main point is, and this is a real old school thing, right, that mobility matters. This is an old graph showing that, you know, when you have heavy traffic, you know fewer friends across the street, um, which is sort of the standard way of thinking about it. Um, and I think that's equally important, but it's also important to lift it into a, another discussion, which is what I call the um, the staging mobilities perspective. The staging mobilities perspective is a, is a shorthand for a way of thinking about the relationship between mobilities and cities that has been developed over a few years. And this is a sort of a graphic representation of uh, what I'm interested in. And, and um, this is going to be published uh, as a book at Routledge in, in, in January. Um, but basically, my, my claim is that what's interesting here is the actual the situation, the practices going on here and now, right? And, and you can look at them from a very, very wide range of, 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 of perspectives. But I would sort of zoom in and say that you at least have to think about the uh, physical and material environments. And I include all the hardware and technologies into that. That's the other, the other chunk, right? Um, but also that it's, uh, it's a question of social interaction, how we move about in the city uh, with our fellow uh, overnights, either uh, in, a, in, a, in a sort of accordance way or in a, in a more conflictual sense. And, and most importantly, perhaps, is that it's a question of embodied performances, right? Bodies are moving in the city, making sense of it, making familiarity with technologies, sites, and ways of, of uh, um, sort of negotiating systems. Now, that's looking at the situation, right? And I will claim that you can sort of look at it as being staged from above by planning and regulation, and we've seen a lot of planning and sort of prints and stuff from above that tries to order the stage and figure out where should stuff go, where should people go, how should things flow, right? But equally, people are making lots of lots of decisions on the ground every day, you know, in terms of mode of transport, route choice, but also, how do I carry myself? I mean, this is very much influenced by a Canadian sociologist, Irvin Goffman, who argued that we present ourselves continuously in the everyday life. And what I've done is basically sort of put Goffman on the move and try to see what happens if you look at mobilities with the Goffman glasses. And, and what we see is that people present themselves, I mean, you're, I, you could be aggressive driving, you could be a, a self-confident environmentalist showing it off with your latest gear. And, and the, the whole way of, of thinking about mobilities is something that is much more related to uh, identity issues, cultural features, and, and interaction perspectives. I think that's what we have to go if we want to understand what is actually what is the creation? So even though you guys are probably going to be big stages uh, and lay out how things are going to roll around in the city, please pay attention to the situation and the fact that so subjects in the situation also, you know, have certain reasons for performing as they do. So basically, mobilities do not just happen or simply take place. 
Mobilities are carefully and meticulously designed and planned from above, as one might say. However, they are equally importantly acted out, performed, and lived from below. So mobilities are staged, and people are performing mobilities, um, that are, and they are engaged in social interactions of staging mobilities. I should say, as a parenthesis, that I've done a lot of case studies in metros and sky trains and public spaces to see the nitty-gritty, tiny interactions between people who want to look big and people who are trying to make their way with the push carts and stuff like that. And I think, I think it's banal, but it's also very clearly evident that when you look at uh, the design, the planning going on, that a lot of that is not on the radar of people who are actually doing the, the plans and the design and the architecture. Um, so I think this theoret theatrical metaphor that is coined by Goffman is actually quite useful to figure out what is, what is the quality of the everyday life, which I think, hopefully, you will agree with me, is the ultimate goal of any of our efforts, right? So staging mobilities is a process of creating lived mobility practices and the material preconditions to these. In the research that I've been doing, contemporary urbanism is understood as highly influenced by the state mobilities of planning, design, and architecture, governance systems, technological networks, as well as by the social interaction, cultural meanings, and the production of social order. Staging mobilities is a social, spatial, temporal process. That's not a nice word, but it's trying to include a lot of things, right? Um, this, of designing mo mobile livescapes from above and, and performing mobile engagement from below. So what would that mean? Well, it actually would mean, like, if you're looking at staging from above, you'll be looking at planning, you'll be looking at government documents, procedures, plans, strategies, visions, and all of that. Um, equally, you'll be looking at designs from the point of view of design manuals, design codes, architecture on itself, regulations, laws, frameworks, uh, legal frameworks um, that has an influential decision on how people can act, either move or not move. Because on the, it's a relational concept, so any, every mobility is related to an immobility, right? It doesn't make sense to think about mobility as something on its own in that sense. But of course, it also relates to institutions, and you talked a lot about institutions today. Policy arenas, economic interest in actors, how do we get money for this, how can we afford it, and those so, so forth.